to one. Let's just focus in on the first little bit. Okay, so these are the things that I would be looking for um, for this entire um, AC. So X and Y, in this case, right, I'm giving it, a, giving it a way that there are two different types of flashlights with the implicit constraint that would be one and a half marks for you uh, having that ready. And I will, um, in, in helping you sometimes, I, I kind of try to think of ways to help you out. If you're not sure about this, if you're not 100% sure about your variables, continue and write your inequalities. Sometimes when you write your inequalities, you realize, oh, this can't be what I have it set as. It has to be something else. Otherwise, my inequality, like if you read the inequality to you back, it won't make sense what you let the variables be, okay? So that is something to keep in mind. Don't just be stuck. I don't know how to do this. Just keep going. And sometimes it's, it's just gonna come to you. Let's write our inequality. So you get one mark for this one because we're talking specifically to type A here, at most different type A. So you have, should have X is less than or equal to 50. And this is where you realize X has to be type A for this inequality to work, right? And then uh, there's also up to 60 type B at most, I guess it says. So one mark for that. So one mark for each one of these. And then you've got your third inequality, which states, right, there's a restriction on the number of hours uh, it takes. So everything is in hours, so no conversion here. So 3x plus 2y is less than or equal to 180. You get one mark for that as well. So for the inequalities, kind of bag that up like that. That would be worth three marks in total. So in, when I mark inequality, like these questions, I basically, it's all or nothing. There is no partial here. But then I take your inequalities and continue working with those when I mark your stuff, right? So that's the, that's, I guess, the upside of it. Then I graph it. So type B, type A, right? Number of, and I'm, I come up with a scale. That's up to you what you want to use but you have only one diagonal line. These other two are special cases, right? You've got your vertical line, the 50 here, and the horizontal, the 60. And um, I guess I, I came up with my uh, intercepts. I would give you a mark for coming up with the intercepts somewhere for, for the diagonal line. And then I would give you another mark for rewriting. So I, if you've done that, you get another mark. So just give one out of one when you've done that. And of course, if your equation is inequality is wrong, it, these are all going to look different, but we're just going to go with it. That's why I word, write the word step on it. Okay? And so uh, solid line, truth below, shade above. Okay, so and, and these two, I didn't even write that for myself. I should have. Here, the truth is on the left side, so I shade right. Here, uh, true is below the line. I shade above, okay? So I shade it above the horizontal to the right and above the uh, diagonal line. So for this graph, I would give you two marks if everything is labeled correctly, everything is where it's supposed to be. Uh, scale being a big component here. So if your scale is off, I would go minus one. Then you have your uh, points of intersections. So the ones you can read, Okay, there, there's this one, this one. I know you're probably like zero, zero. I've never had that one before, but it is surrounding my, my uh, solution region. So you would want to add that. If you didn't do it today, I'm going to be okay. We're not going to take marks off. And then, so these three here though, they are red. So one and a half marks for those three. And then the two you used your calculator for these two here. I would give you one each for those. And that brings this out of 10. It makes this page worth 10 marks. 
So don't forget about your zero, zero. It is surrounding. So the X and the Y axis act as boundary lines as well when it's a word problem. Questions, comments. Okay. All right, let's keep going. You did do a graph, right? I didn't say no graph, so I'm gonna grab my. Did I ask you to graph it, right? I did ask you. I'm going to have to graph it. Uh, this is going to be live here. But let's focus on our inequalities first and foremost here. As Stephanie estimates that she burned 600 calories jogging and uh, for one hour, 400 calories when cycling for one hour. She wishes to burn at least 4,800 4, calories and spend a maximum of 10 hours exercising. So this might have been one of those where you're not sure what's what. But um, it, we're talking jogging and cycling in hours. Okay, that's very important here. And X and Y both have to be greater than or equal to zero. So I give you one and a half marks for um, le defining your variables. And then I, there's a restriction on calories. I want at least 4,800. So this is what I'm looking for. And I'm using the calories as my coefficients here for hours jogging and hours cycling and then number of hours as a maximum of 10 hours a week exercising so we just x and y since they represent hours have to be less than or equal to 10 that'd be another one there and one there okay. let's graph this now i don't know where my key is where the graph is on so i'm just gonna do this with you it's gonna take me a little longer but it doesn't hurt so for the 600, should I do that here? No, I'm just going to go X and S up, Y and S up for this one. Okay, you got to use your space wisely there. So the 600X is equal to 4800 divided by 600. X is equal to 8, correct? 8, 0. And then we've got uh, 400y is equal to 4,800. Divide both sides by 400. Y is equal to 12, 0, 12. So that, those are my intercepts for the first inequality. You get a mark for that. And rewriting that, you get 400y is greater than or equal to negative 600x plus 4,800, <clears throat> you divide both sides by 400, y is greater than or equal to, uh, you can go neg negative 3 over 2 or negative 6 over 4, 600 and 400 is the same thing as 6 and 4 plus 12, like that. So you've got uh, a mark for that, a mark for rewriting, and then it's solid true region is above, we will shade below. Okay. Emphasis on where we shade. And then we've got uh, this one here, which is very easy to do. This one is 10, 0, 0, 10. I'll still give you a mark for that. Let's rewrite it. That'd be y is less than or equal to negative x plus 10. I'll give you a mark for that as well. We've got a solid line, true is below, we shade above, emphasis on where we shade. Okay, so here we go. Graphing this. Uh, this is jaw, uh, this is cycling in hours. Half a mark for if that's missing, okay, this is jogging in hours. Um, I gotta go, yeah, for sure 10 here along the x-axis. So let's see, 
I won't be able to fit if I go up by one. So I'm going to go two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. There we go. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. That's a good scale. And my Y, I got to go all the way to twelve. So I'll go up by twos as well. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. There we go. First line is eight zero zero twelve. This one is six hundred x plus four hundred y is greater than or equal to forty eight hundred. And then the next one is ten ten, right? So ten ten. This one I shade below. This one I shade above. No, wait. This one I shade above. This one. Gotta be careful or else you end up with no solution region, which is highly unlikely if you get that many marks attached to it, right? It is possible that there's no solution. So I've got solution in there. And obviously your graph will be very different if you made a mistake on your inequalities, which I would expect to, for it to look different. I don't want your graph to look like this, but your inequalities are different. Then you're trying to make it something that isn't the case, right? So don't force it to look a certain way, just follow your inequalities. If you find that you have no solution, go back, right? You probably made a mistake. Um, if you find that um, it just doesn't make sense, it doesn't add up, then yeah, go back and, and check to see if you've done it. So my corner points, in this case, two of them are already known to me. I just have to find this one here. So I'm gonna go POIs or corner points. I'm gonna go eight zero and then 10, zero. So these are worth uh, one together. The graph I would say is worth two, right? The graph is worth two. The POIs that I have here are both half. And then the third one I'm gonna find. Can I ask you what it is? Um, I'm gonna ask you, anybody have this same graph as me and is willing to share? Liam, four, six? Four, six? Okay. Thank you. Saves me a lot. You, that's exactly what you got. You didn't round, no? It, it was exactly four, six? Okay. So if it had been a decimal, write, a, write down the decimal and then round next to it. So this one is worth a mark as well. So half, half, one. So the graph is two. The POIs are worth two. What are we at for this question? That's... Uh, so we are two and two, that's four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me do this again. Hold on. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven and a half. Okay, so lots of marks, I know. 11 and a half for the backside, not including the bonus, of course. We'll do the bonus in a bit. I'll show you, maybe you already looked at it, you peaked. Okay, so 11 and a half for this, and then you go down here, and if you want the bonus, this is what it is. So you're, this is rectangular, right, for length and width, so X and and Y represent length and width in meters. Um, both of them have to be positive, of course. And it says that uh, the, pen, uh, the length must be greater than the width. Okay, so length has to be greater than the width. And it says two, uh, the perimeter can be no more than 120 meters. So this is your perimeter, two X plus two Y has to be less than or equal to 120. 
and the area must be at least 280 square meters. Sorry about the typo there. So x times y. You've not seen that one, have you? x times y, that's the area, has to be greater than or equal to 280. So if you want the two bonus marks, you have to have all of those things there. If you got, let's say, two out of the three, I'll give you one bonus mark. If you got two out of the three right. Okay. So potentially two bonus marks here for you. So 11 and a half for the back side, 11 for the front. That will significantly change our total. I know it's weird, but we're just going to go with it. So cross out the 15. So that's 22.5 that you can uh, get. Make sure your name and last name is on there.